All right, everybody, how's it going? Uh, it's Flashpoint here. Going to be going over the, I guess, the steps and how I go about modifying a bust for, like, a, an action figure. So let me just uh, open Mesh Mixer real quick. So to caveat this, uh, all the files I use and the ones intended for selling are... Um, royalty free license or I make sure that the license that the bust or the file is is meant for like you can sell it like a 3d print you know not the file itself but whatever modifications and whatever physical prints that you get from the file um, that you can sell it so just to make sure to double check uh, your licenses and what you're able to do with those so let me drop in the file that I'll be um, cutting up today. It's this Batman bust, of course, it's the Batman head. I've been on a Batman spree. Come on, drop in. Drop in. There you go. All right. <clears throat> when you load it up in a mesh mixer, and keep in mind this is all on a Mac that I'm doing it, so it may be a little different. For Windows users but in general it's all the same so when you load up your file as you can see here it's kind of laying down on the print bed if you will um, I go over to edit and then align and then I just pick one where it's gonna make it face up so except and as you can see boom now it's uh, in the center and standing upright. So what you want to do is cut off a majority of what you don't need, which is right here, the um, body essentially. So under the edit, you go to plain cut, if you will. And so I go, I try to get this, this middle line right here, the print bed kind of lined up towards as thin as possible. That looks like like that's going to be the where I'm at. So the cut type is going to be a discard half. So whenever you cut, the half that you don't want is going to look like this thin or the x-ray portion. And the stuff that's going to stay is going to be solid. And then I just have it as remeshed fill. So you want to make your cut. I try to do it along the jawline, if you will. So let's see. Okay. That looks pretty good. Accept it. <clears throat> All right. So now you can see I have just the head. All right. Sometimes it gets off center, like this point, if you will, this red point. And what I'll do to like recenter it, because I still haven't figured out in Mesh Mixer, is I'll just save the file and then I'll just redrop it in. But I think I can work with this right now. All right, so now that we've cut the head off, um, now it's time to essentially shape it. Um, and so a good tip that I do is, especially for Batman, is if I want to uh, shape it for like a Mezco, which is what I usually do, I will get a Mezco Batman head or just like a Mezco head in general and look at the shape that it kind of mimics if you will and i'll try to i'll try to mimic the shape that the um uh of the head i'm trying to replicate so we're gonna do a lot of boolean differences or boolean differences boolean something whatever it's called um we're gonna be doing a lot of that just to shape it and then kind of doing some uh sculpting smoothing here and there so if you look at a Mezco Batman head, uh, typically it's cut like straight back, kind of halfway through the head, and then it follows like the jaw line, if you will. So if you look at my mouse, it kind of goes up here, kind of up, and then it just pretty much cuts straight across. So what I'm gonna do is go into Mesh Mix. I'm going to drop a cube, if you will. Get it sized by pulling the small little um, 
square in the center of it, and then you can move it with these uh, arrows. So I got a rough <coughs> shape or a rough size that I want. Push it on over to your um, file. And then, so as you can see, it kind of intersects. That's kind of what you want. Like, this is where you're going to make the cut, essentially, with the Boulay indifference. And this is kind of, it's kind of at an angle. So let me just turn it a bit. And then, all right. So now I've got that there. And it looks about even on both sides. I'll accept this. I'll click this to make sure. See, when you click something, it highlights the object. I'll click the new object that I want to edit. I'll edit it, make it a solid. So it'll if when you make it a solid, it'll make the Boolean difference run smoother, if you will. So I don't change any of this right now. Accept it. So then the little object browser will pop up here. The solid version will be its own new object. I just delete the uh, previous version. So then I take the file, I select the main file, which is the head. And then I also select the second file, the shape we just did. So as you can see, this little window pops up and here's what you want, Boolean difference, click it. And as you can see, it cuts that shape out. And that's what we're looking for. You can change this to precise or max uh, quality. Either one should work. Um, just don't do fast approximate because sometimes it'll um, not get you some clean cuts. We'll do max quality right now. Accept it. Boom, now it's its own little <coughs> um, object, if you will. So we've got the back of the head, and then we've got like the back of the jaw, if you will. And then I'm gonna get rid of this portion. So just gonna do the same thing. I will go into the mesh mix. I will drop a cube in there, get it to a size that I need it. Bring it on over. Turn it oh, not that way. Control Z or Command Z will undo everything uh, or the, your last step. So I don't need it that deep, so to speak. Uh, all right. Just trying to get it. And then we're going to angle it like this so we can cut off that chin portion that excess chin portion just a little bit there all right accept it for now just so i can get a better look at it eh, doesn't look too bad <clears throat> All right, um, I think I'm gonna make this cut and see how it looks. So remember, edit, make solid, accept it. Get rid of the old one, select both ones, both of them. Make sure, always make sure that the, the file that you want to keep is the first one selected and Boolean difference. So that's pretty good. I think it's a pretty good cut. I'll just go max quality, accept. All right. Um, so here's what we got, right? Um, this is pretty much 90% done for the most part. Um, so I'm just going to smooth out some surfaces first off let me save this real quick i'm going to export it 
is as a obj file or object file let's take it a second to okay export come on okay file export save as why can't i type anything I cancel file i'll save the the project projects come on <clears throat> not let me type in here all right well i'll just keep on messing with this and then so i want to smooth out these uh, essentially sharp corners uh, and so I'll go into the sculpt. The brush I will use is the shrink smooth here. The fall off is just the first one, or if you want a different one, you can try it out. I just use the first one. The strength, I get it about 25, and then the size is to, you adjust it to whatever you need, essentially. And then you'll see, uh, it's not popping up. <clears throat> oh, there it goes. All right. Oh, that's too big. I don't know why it's all doing this. Essentially, I'll just click here and it'll smooth it out a bit. So it's not so sharp. All right, so we'll just call that good for now, for the purpose, for the sake of the tutorial. All right, so you got your head shaped um, just how you want it. And you want to make a peg hole. Um, you can pre-make a peg hole file uh, that you can just drop into any head that you want and you know that it's it's got like the dimensions that you need. But I'll make one uh, right here. I'll just do one. So I always like to look from the bottom up and then I'll drop a circle in, make it decent size. Copy, boom. Edit it, transform it to move it around. So what you, what this first hole is essentially going to be is like the, the hole that sits on the cow, that pops onto the, the cow head, the cow head. Right. So then you can like shape it if you need to, but make it thinner, elongate it. So I'm gonna say that's a good start. A way to check check it is to click your head that you want to make the hole in. Drop this. Go to the shaders. Drop this clear one, and then you can see kind of like where the hole sits. Then click it edit transform then you can move it a bit i'm going to drop it down because i want a peg hole to sit in there okay i'm gonna throw the shader back on so i can see if there's any clipping through doesn't look like there's any clipping edit make solid where are you? Boom, right there. Accept. Delete the extra. Select both files. Boolean difference. All right, now you got your hole. Okay. 
the hole for the cow uh, put in there. And then for the pig hole, you just drop another circle in there. Uh, for this size, since it's a big file, you, if you know the, the size of the hole, if you will, you can input it in here. But I just, it's always better to have a slightly bigger peg hole than to have a smaller one because then you can always just put a little bit of sticky tack in there. All right, so I'll just go with that. Transform it. No, not that. I'm on the wrong object. Boom. Transform. I want to try to get it center. <clears throat> I may have made a big, too big of a hole in the cow head, but this is just for tutorial purposes. I can go and edit this head again later. All right. Let's just call that good right there. You don't want just a complete circle. You still want, you want to probably cut the circle either in half or at three quarters so that the peg can pop in there. So make solid. Delete the part, select both. Boolean difference. Boom. Now you have a peg hole. <clears throat> and this is pretty much like what I do to uh, make a head for a, an action figure. I'll plane cut it, I'll Boolean difference the cuts and shape it out. I'll smooth the um, hard edges or the kind of the rough spots of it. I'll Boolean difference a cow or a neck hole, and then I'll Boolean difference a peg hole. So. And then that's pretty much it. You can go to the analysis and go to inspector and you see like these little, these will pop up. Any red ones that you see, they'll be like blue, magenta, red. Any red ones, you wanna click the red one because it's like something is wrong with the mesh and it could cause printing errors. These purple and the blue ones, you can, I guess, kind of leave alone. Uh, I haven't had any printing errors with the purple or blue ones. But if you have any questions uh, regarding the, I guess, the whole process, uh, feel free to shoot me a message uh, either on Instagram or on YouTube or leave a comment or whatever, and I will try to help you out as best as I can. So I uh, appreciate you taking the time to, to watch, and hopefully you all have learned something. All right. Take it easy.